prayer for the 2022 national and local elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming national and local elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides our nation. For every petition, let us pray together, Deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord. From coercion, intimidation, violence, and terrorism, Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth, Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud, Deliver us, Lord. From gullibility to the deceptive and blindness of perspective, Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language, Deliver us, Lord. Now let our response be, Hear us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That care for creation may never be ignored. Hear us, Lord. That solidarity may guide the path of peace and development. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others and grow in holiness. Guide our politics as you guide our lives. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let this Eucharistic celebration and our receiving of the bread of life give us strength today as we perform our penance and sacrifices this Friday of Lent. And so, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sinfulness and ask the Lord for His pardon and mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord. For we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that purifying us by the sacred practice of penance, you may lead us in sincerity of heart to attain the holy things to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Israel loved Joseph best of all his sons, for he was the child of his old age, and he had made him a long tunic. When his brothers saw that their father loved him best of all his sons, they hated him so much that they would not even greet him. 
One day, when his brothers had gone to pasture their father's flock at Shechem, Israel said to Joseph, Your brothers, you know, are tending our flocks at Shechem. Get ready, I will send you to them. So Joseph went after his brothers and caught up with them in Dothan. They noticed him from a distance, and before he came up to them, they plotted to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes that master dreamer. Come on, let us kill him and throw him into one of the cisterns here. We could say that a wild beast devoured him. We shall then see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to save him from their hands, saying, We must not take his life. Instead of shedding blood, he continued, Just throw him into that cistern there in the desert, but do not kill him outright. His purpose was to rescue him from their hands and return him to his father. So when Joseph came up to them, they stripped him of the long tunic he had on. Then they took him and threw him into the cistern, which was empty and dry. They then sat down to their meal. Looking up, they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead, their camels laden with gum, balm, and resin to be taken down to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, what is to be gained by killing our brother and concealing his blood? Rather, let us sell him to these Ishmaelites instead of doing away with him ourselves. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh. His brothers agreed. They sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. When the Lord called down a famine on the land and ruined the crop that sustained them, he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. They had weighed him down with fetters, and he was bound with chains till his prediction came to pass, and the word of the Lord proved him true. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions. Remember the marvels the Lord has done. Please stand. Pag-ibig sa sanibutan ng Diyos ay kayo na lamang Kanyang anak ibinigay upang mabuhay kailanman ang mananalig na tunay The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted the vineyard put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, and one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. 
again, he sent other servants more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, thinking, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those tenants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched men to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper times. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, by the Lord has this been done, and it is wonderful in your eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they knew that he was speaking about them. And although they were attempting to arrest him, they feared the crowds for they regarded him as a prophet. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. At first glance, at first hearing, our two readings today are stories of suffering, stories of betrayal, of being forsaken. In the first reading from the book of Genesis, we hear of the story of Joseph, the master dreamer. He was betrayed by his own brothers. Naiinggit sa kanya ang kanyang mga kapatid. Kaya siya ay ibinenta. Tinagtak sila ng kanyang sariling mga kapatid. And in our gospel reading today, we hear another story of suffering. The parable of Jesus about the son of the owner of the vineyard who was killed by the tenants of the vineyard. These two stories prefigure for us the suffering of Jesus, who himself was betrayed when he was crucified on the cross. Ang mga kwento pong ito ng pagdurusa, si Jose sa unang pagbasa na pinagtak sila ng kanyang sariling mga kapatid at pinagplanuhang patayin, sa Ebanghelyo naman, ang talinghaga ni Jesus tungkol sa anak ng may-ari ng ubasan na pinatay ng mga tagapagtanim. Itong dalawang kwento na ito ay nagpapakita sa atin ng pagdurusa ni Jesus. But my dear brothers and sisters, I would like us also not just to focus on the suffering in the story, but I would like to point out to you one thing in these stories that also refer to Jesus. And that is His identity as a beloved Son. In the midst of the sufferings of Jesus, His identity as the beloved Son 
was not lost. Kung papansinin po natin ang dalawang kwento na ito, ito ay punong-puno ng kwento ng pagdurusa at pagtataksil. Pero tingnan natin ng mabuti ang dalawang kwento. Bagaman mayroong pagdurusa, bagaman mayroong pagtataksil, parehas sa kwento na ito ay inilarawan ang anak bilang pinakamamahal ng ama. In the first reading, Joseph was described as the one who was loved best by the father, the beloved of his father. And also in our gospel reading today, the son was beloved by the owner of the vineyard. My dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of all the sufferings of Jesus, He always kept in His mind that He was the beloved of the Father. And that is what gave strength to Him to face everything. Bagaman si Jesus ay punong-puno ng pagdurusa sa Kanyang buhay, Lagi niyang tinatandaan, siya ay ang minamahal na anak ng Ama. Kaya yan ang kanyang naging lakas para harapin anuman ang naging pagsubok sa buhay. My dear brothers and sisters, this is also a reminder for all of us that no amount of suffering can take away our identities as the beloved children of the Father. Let this become our strength today. Sana po ngayong araw na ito na tayo ay nagsisimba, ito po ang ating maging lakas. Kung paanong kinayang harapin ni Jesus ang mga pagsubok sa buhay, sapagkat lagi niyang iniisip na siya ay ang minamahal na anak ng Ama, ganun din naman po tayo. Alam ko po marami sa atin ay humaharap sa mga pagsubok, lalo na sa panahon ngayon. Tularan natin si Jesus. Sa harap ng mga pagsubok at pagdurusa ni Jesus sa buhay, kahit sa pagtataksil sa Kanya, laging nasa isip Niya, ako ay minamahal ng Ama. Yan ang aking lakas sa gitna ng pagsubok. Kapag humaharap ko kayo sa pagsubok ngayon, lagi niyo pong sasabihin sa inyong panalangin ng may pananalig at pananampalataya. Ako ay minamahal ng Ama. Yan ang aking lakas para harapin ang lahat ng pagsubok sa buhay. Amen. Please stand. Reflecting upon the warning in the gospel about the need to bear fruit, we place our requests before God our Father. For every petition, let us say, Lord of the vineyard, bless our lives. Lord of the vineyard, bless our lives. That the Holy Father may receive light, strength, and support in guiding the church in these difficult times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the vineyard, vineyard bless, bless our, our lives. lives. That our minds may be filled with the peace of God, which brings eternal joy and lasting happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the vineyard, vineyard, bless our, our lives. lives that in our own lives we may bear the fruits of love, forgiveness, justice, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the vineyard, bless our, our lives. lives. We pray for all who are sick, 
especially those afflicted with COVID-19 and for those who care for them. May the vaccines and medicines, as well as our concern for each other, help end this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the vineyard, vineyard, bless our lives. That the dead may receive their eternal rest in your kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the vineyard, vineyard, bless our, our lives. lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your steadfast love. Help us to serve you generously and to live lives worthy of our calling. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. By this present sacrifice, may your merciful grace Prepare your servants, O God, for the worthy celebration of these mysteries and lead them to it by a devout way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am, am not, not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to deceive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal salvation, we pray, O Lord, that we may set our course so well as to attain the redemption you promise. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Grant your people, O Lord, we pray, health of mind and body, that by constancy in good deeds, they may always merit the defense of your protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Oh,